Yeah, welcome to Powerhouse on Rainbow. This gym is owned by Iris Kyle and Hide Yamagishi. And the muscle knows intensity equals workload equals stimulation. I'm gonna have a good year. This is gonna be a good year for me. I guess we'll start the morning by grabbing our Helomix. My name is David. I'm 34 years old. I've been competing since 2009, but I got into bodybuilding in 2007. And this, this year might be the last year competing. I'm not really sure. I've tried to turn pro four times in the past, and this is gonna be the fifth attempt we're qualified for the pro qualifier in 2024, so we're ready. All we have to really do is focus on trying to win that show. And that's gonna be May or December, one of the two. I haven't locked down which one exactly we're gonna do yet, but one of those is gonna be the fifth attempt at me trying to become a professional bodybuilder. Today we're gonna to head out to Powerhouse. It's on Rainbow. It's owned by Iris Kyle and Hide Yamagishi. And we're gonna train biceps and we're gonna train triceps which biceps and triceps are my favorite muscles. I love arms. When I started training, all I did from 2002, I think until 2005, was just train arms. That was the only thing I cared about was when I was in a sleeveless shirt, I wanted everyone to know I went to the gym and my arms were big and strong. I remember the first time I trained legs, I was so weak and I was so embarrassed by that because I had these big arms and these big shoulders and chest, but I had absolutely no legs. So I would go to the YMCA at two o'clock in the morning where no one could see me. And I would have the leg extension with one little plate on there. All right, so we will need one more Gila mix. I love these things. I've been with this company for about three years now and we're gonna need carbs. So we'll set this up soon. We start sipping on this one though. This is pretty much caffeine, citrulline, and creatine. And if you're looking at all the supplements here, it's pretty much just these two products. This is what I use the majority of the time. We have Gorilla Mode and Gorilla Nitric. This one has stimulant, this one does not have stimulant. So a lot of the time, you'll see me mix these together. Like I might use just this one if I wanna go to bed, don't wanna stay up at night. I might use this one if it's like, a big PR day, maybe back or maybe legs, but the majority you see me mix these together. And that's because they are almost identical, except this one has stim and this one does not. I like, uh, I use the collagen. Sometimes I sip on this during the cardio. Sometimes I sip on it throughout the day, especially if I'm dieting, it just makes the water taste good. It has a lot of amino acids in it. Creatine, I'll take creatine on its own if I'm not taking it with my pre-workout. Glycerol, I use this extra sometimes on like an upper body day today. I might throw some extra in there. Respawn is cool. I use this one because it has a lot of the cognitive stuff in it. It's good for your brain. Energy is great. Just if you want a little pickup, I use this around the house sometimes when office work. I'll actually just take a little bit of this. Always have the fiber in there. Extra creatine back there. Carb powder. Everything a growing boy needs. Most of this stuff is... Uh, we have magnesium, vitamin D. We even have a little bit of Bayer for our heart. Um, but a lot of the stuff you see in here is uh, to manage cholesterol and stuff like that, just to try to make sure that my heart can stay a bit happier while we're bodybuilding. I put the pre-workout down now because it takes 30 minutes, 45 minutes for caffeine to truly be fully in there. You'll start to feel it within like five or 10 minutes, but really it takes 45 minutes or so for it to be fully in there, fully doing its thing. Right, all right, let's party. Let's party, let's party, let's go to the gym, let's get pumped up, let's have a good time, let's build big muscles, let's get huge. No, out here in the valley, I belong to probably 40 different gyms or so. Each chain, LVAC, EOS, both have seven, eight locations, and then we have the powerhouse, the lift factory. We have a tremendous amount of gyms to choose from. But uh, I go to mostly LVAC and uh, Iris Kyle's Powerhouse on Rainbow. And I'll go to different gyms for different body parts. So I have a place I like to train back. I have a place I like to train chest. I have a place I like to train arms. If you love it, there is something about it that is extremely addicting and rewarding to itself. 
it will take everything from you but it will also give a lot to you as well so it just depends on your perception and then how far you push yourself even past the the limit of maybe realizing you should calm down and take a back seat for a little while you'll see guys go homeless over it fitness as a lifestyle is should not be intertwined with your bodybuilding they're two different things in my opinion if i twist my ankle if something happens something tears i quit i get in an accident today might be the very last day that i look this good that i can work this hard you absolutely have no idea so beyond appreciating it i, I treat it like it's all i got to make everything happen and it might be my last chance to ever make it happen yeah welcome to powerhouse on rainbow this gym is owned by iris kyle and hide yamagishi and i like this gym because it's a no-nonsense gym everybody in here is keeping themselves eyes are down working hard this is a good spot so that's what we're going to do today you're going to follow me around i'm going to try to go through my thing as naturally as i can you guys are going to fly on the wall and uh we're going to build muscles Oh yeah, yeah, so pretty much I come in, I take a lot of time to warm up. I make sure I'm really warm. And I started doing that the last 10 years or so of my career and my injuries went to almost nothing, knock on wood, knock on wood. Big deal, I take so long to warm up. I used to find myself being so pumped and ready to go like halfway through the workout towards the end of the workout and then I was done and I was like but I feel great and I look great I want to keep going so I try to warm up and take as much time as I need so I can have that feeling when I have my first working set my first exercise and have that the whole workout way more productive two or three working sets and I really only do a third one if I feel I messed up one of the first two one has a rep range of four seven one has a rep range of eight 15 in there after this move because I really like the cables for warming up these are great for warming up I start with the rope warm up with the rope go to something heavy more of a fixed bar sometimes I change up the shape but more of a fixed bar heavy give it some good drive and push come back to a rope squeeze it out pretty good and then I normally move to a free weight exercise where I'm balancing a little bit have some more mm. power blink 180 to 90s boy Potatoes. <laughs> so, 
I like hurt so much and sting so much, it like makes you laugh because it's like that's what I don't think people realize. That, like training gets you high. Like it like training is intoxicating. Cool because like have our pumps all the time. One of my favorite things is like all these gills just come out. Well now they're like all blended in. There they are. So we're gonna keep with the overhead work because I love overhead work for triceps. So, but instead of doing the single arm dumbbell extension, we're gonna switch to an easy curl bar and we're gonna knock out a set or two of these. That snuck up on me so fast. Woo! I felt like a hundred bazillion pounds at the end. Like we all sack of potatoes. When you're doing those last, like, <coughs> last, last uh, reps, what's going through your mind? What's, what's really pushing you to do that? It depends. I think about a lot of stuff though. I think about a lot of situations where strength might be really appropriate. Have you ever seen the movie Cliffhanger? The opening scene is this girl, and she's got Sylvester Stallone, and she's holding on like this, and he's holding on like this, and she's like, don't let me fall. Don't let me fall. And he's like, I'm gonna try. I think about that all the time. If I was in that situation, I'd have that girl. I'd knock out like 19 reps as the teddy bear fell. I'd knock out a couple more and then I would just sling her on my back and take her home. I think about stuff like that all the time. I try to think of myself in the movie Indiana Jones when him and Shortstop are being crushed by the roof in the Temple of Doom and the spikes are coming down and he's like pushing on it and nothing's working and he's putting skulls in there and nothing's working. I'm like, man, I'll just overhead press that right up. We'd be fine. We're gonna do the stripping method. So the stripping method is when you put a weight on there, knock out your set, Drop the, lit, drop the weight a little bit, knock out the set, drop the weight a little bit, knock out the set until you're just fried. We don't call it advanced because it's for people who are good at training and they, you know, we call it advanced because it pushes the set past failure. It pushes the set past its normal capabilities, advancing the set. So the advanced techniques are stripping method, rest pause, force negatives. There's a lot of them, I forget how many exactly. This is one of them. But they're fantastic at the end of a workout because when your max workload is fatigued and it's starting to diminish a lot, this is something that will allow you to force the muscle to have tremendous output, which will cause work times stimulation equals, uh, work times intensity equals stimulation, rather is what I'm trying to get at. Extra reps per set. 
because we still want to have an overall range. So this might be your finisher here? Yeah, this is going to be the finishing move for triceps for sure. That's why I just don't know exactly how heavy I want to go because I want it to be heavy enough to challenge me like pretty, pretty decently. But I also want to be able to squeeze really well. But that's it. I want a combination of those two. I've already done a lot of work over there with the stripping method. I don't need to sit here for a thousand more reps. I just want to be able to get that angle. And this D-grip with this cable really allows me to turn that elbow and flex the tricep all the way, which is how I get a lot of these gills back here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I chose pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, I'll do some sets that are traditionally heavy, but most of my stuff externally doesn't even look that heavy. And I guess it's really not. My biggest weights that I lifted when it was 19, 20, 21, 22, that's when I was lifting the most amount of poundage. But I grew the most and I looked the best when I took away every mechanical advantage that there was. Momentum, I pause, I squeeze, I never let off tension. I push and I push and I push, and I force the contraction as much as possible, and I try to isolate it as much as possible. And that, at first, my goodness, was the weight dramatically decreased, and I've gotten stronger in those movements over the years and with that pattern. But taking away every single mechanical advantage and then learning to train like that, the muscle doesn't know any better. The muscle knows intensity equals workload, equals stimulation. So when you can do that, you can make five pounds feel like a thousand pounds. And you can take so much stress off your tendons, off your joints, off the muscles themselves, because they're contracting and they're working and their output is so dramatic. But they're actually doing it still in safe parameters. Because the human body, we see power lifters, what is possible and what is potential. But then when you're in here training, and you're in these parameters forcing the muscle to do tremendous amounts of work, your actual risk of tearing isn't the greatest knock on wood. So that was the workout. It wasn't a huge workout for me, but it's triceps. What we'll do in four days or so is I'll have a delt dominant day and then I'll throw triceps at the end of it. And I kind of swap back and forth like that to give you a simple idea of how we're gonna do things. We're done now. The workout was good. The pump was good. I'm hungry. We need a protein shake for sure. So the next step is go home and eat. Absolutely. 
All right, well, that's it for me. We're back at the house, and I'm going to have a protein shake. I try to put this down pretty much immediately after the workout. It takes 15 minutes for me to get home or so, but that's okay. Sometimes I do it at the gym. But we'll put down the shake now. We'll have a solid meal in about 30 minutes or so, and then we'll be back on normal schedule for meals and all that jazz. But the workout was good. Triceps got super pumped. Shoulders felt fine. They got a little attention at the end. And like I said, our next workout will be shoulder dominant and then we'll touch on triceps. So we'll even it out. But that's the style we're going to have. We're going to try to come into this season, the 2024 season, smooth, safe, healthy, not overtrain. I have a tendency to put that throttle down a little too hard and it normally hurts me. So we're going to try to come into this smoothly slowly professionally eat all my food take my time rest when i'm supposed to i'm gonna have a good year this is gonna be a good year for me 2024